Nick Holgate from SAF Australia. This morning I'm going to be talking about programming the SAF Integra series radio. The particular radios I've got here are SAF Integra GS 11 gig. However, the, the GUI on all of the Integra radios is pretty much the same. So if you can do it for an 11 gig radio, you can pretty much do it for all of them. So the first question is, well, why do we do this? Why do we do the programming here in the office rather than waiting until we get out into the field? Well, some good reasons. First of all, it's really good to have recorded all of the settings before we actually even start doing the programming. What that means is then we've got a record of them in case we need to uh, get them later on. And it means that it's much more likely we're going to get them accurate when we actually put them into the radio. The second thing is that we really want to be pretty confident that when you're installing the radios in the field, that they're all fully programming and working properly. So if you run into problems with cabling issues or alignment issues, or what have you, you're not second guessing yourself in terms of, well, uh, is it actually a, how I set this radio or is it actually something else? So what sort of information should we record uh, regarding these links? Well, my suggestion is that you should really record all of the information which you're putting into these radios. So this is uh, what we do. We typically use an Excel uh, spreadsheet, name of the network, the date that was the information was recorded, the name of each of the end of the link, the IP address, the frequency. So obviously the frequency comes from the uh, ACMA license. We record the equipment, uh, both the, the radio type and the antenna, the modulation which has been set on the radios, the bandwidth, again coming from the ACMA license, and the polarization. We also record the expected receive level, this is from the link budget calculations, and what that corresponds to in terms of the voltage if we're using a multimeter for the, doing the alignment. Gateway, IP mask, and obviously username and password. The other thing we'd recommend you do, just to save confusion, is put a label on each of the radios with the location. So this one's marked as depot, this one here has been, got a label saying office. What that means is that when these do go out into the field, the right radio goes to the right site to avoid a lot of problems. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is connect our power supply unit into our PoE injector. If you have wired up your DC pug for the PoE injector incorrectly, you will not get a green light here. So the green light means that the, PO, the power supply unit is passing power to the PoE injector. And we've got a right red light at the top, which indicates there's no PoE++ device connected to the other end. So now what we'll do is we will go from the data and power on our PoE injector into the LAN port on the radio. So what you'll see is that uh, on the PoE injector, we go from a green light and a red light to a green light and two yellow lights. So what that means is that this device has recognised there's a PoE++ device connected to it. On the radio, we've now got an orange and green LED, which will say solid for about five seconds. And then after that, it will go into a boot up routine. And when it's fully booted, you'll see that this light will then turn to a slow blinking green, at which point the, the radio is now operating. So the next uh, stage while that is happening is to connect from the network side of the, sorry, from the data side of the PoE injector into my laptop. And what we need to do is make sure that the laptop is on the same subnet as the radio. So the radio is 192.168.205.10 for the low band radio and .11 for the high band radio. So, so the laptop needs to be in 192.168.205 dot something other than 10 or 11, which is the same as the radio. What I normally do is just use a command prompt just to check I am actually talking to the radio. So it's a high band radio, so it's 192.168.205.11. So I just ping that, I said I can get a, a reply there. So I've set the IP address to my laptop to 192.168.205.5. I now enter the IP address of the radio, 192.168.205.11, which is the IP address of the high end. Comes up with a username and password, so the default username is admin, and the default password is change me, all lowercase. So I enter those in, push login, and the radio will eventually come up with a, a login page. 
So when, once we've logged, uh, where the screen appears, what we'll see is all the information for our local radio, but clearly no information from our remote radio because there's no link between them at this stage. So as we can see, we get, uh, on the remote side, we've got all ND, i.e. there's no connection between them. On the local side, we, we have got some information uh, where it actually applies to the radio itself. So the first thing we want to do in terms of programming the radio is to, I always start by doing the radio itself. So I go to over the air, configuration, and modify. So I want to start by setting my uh, transmit frequency, which I get from my sheet as being 11505, which it already is set to, so that's, that's good. Uh, my bandwidth profile is 40 megahertz. So 40 megahertz Etsy G variable power. And modulation, I'm going to choose the highest modulation for the maximum speed, which is 2048 QAM FEC ACM. So 40 error correction and adaptive code modulation, which means it will automatically change the modulation if the uh, link is affected by weather. So once I've done that, I then execute the configuration. It takes a few minutes to write this into the memory on the, uh, the radio. Once it's written in, you'll, it'll come up with a save button in the top right. So the next step is to name the radios as well as change the username and password. Very good idea to change the name of the radio because otherwise when you log into a link, you're not quite sure what radio you're actually uh, logging into and it can cause a lot of frustration. So if we go to system and system configuration, modify. So currently a system name is SAF. And normally what I do is I change it to the local link. So here it's office dash depot. So I know the link is office depot and I'm at the office end. So the location name is office. If I was doing the other end, it would be depot office and obviously the location name would be depot. So if I save that, so execute configuration. For the username and password, go to user configuration. Modify, select admin, and I'm going to change it. So currently it's changed me, I want to change it to something else. So here I'll go back to the my password, control C, control V, control V, and just make sure I have got the right one, yes. Now I can execute configuration. So the last thing I, I, I need to do here is to set my IP addresses uh, for my radio. So if I go into system, IP configuration, modify. So currently I'm on 205.11, which is uh, the default. And I want to change this to 5.11 and the gateway to 192. 168.5.1 and the IP, uh, IP mask is correct 255.255.255.0. So I've executed configuration. Now, what's happened is I've changed the IP address of my radio and it's now on the wrong uh, subnet for my computer. So I need to go into my computer, change the IP address onto the same subnet as the radio, uh, as the IP address in the radio I've just set. So what I need to do here is change the this octet to a five. And the radio will automatically select the uh, the IP address you change it to. So I can just reload it. Now using my admin and my new password. Should be able to log in. Okay, so that looks good. Um, I can just as I, on this, the main page here. I can see all the settings I've made. I can just quickly look through them to make sure they look okay. Looks good to me. So the last thing I need to do is just press save. And what that will then do is save the settings to the radio. So if I really reboot it, the uh, uh, the radios are actually held within the radio. So now this radio is fully programmed, ready to go. 
and I need to do exactly the same thing with the second radio. So having programmed our first radio, we now want to do exactly the same for our second radio. I've actually previously done this on this radio, so it should just be a matter of plugging it in, and hopefully we should see a link. So exactly the same thing will happen. You see the orange and uh, green LED com comes on. It'll boot up, takes about 45 seconds or so, and eventually it'll come up with the green flashing light. However, at this stage, assuming there is a link, you should see this LED will be flashing more quickly, which represents how much signal uh, they're actually getting between them. So we'll wait 45 seconds or so. The other thing is obviously on the screen at the moment, what we're seeing is uh, we've got ND in the remote. What we should see if it's established a link, all these red should disappear. So we'll just wait for a few seconds while the radio boots up. So the light's now gone off. So hopefully it should now come back within a few seconds with the, uh, the green. Okay, so we've now got a link and you can see the f f uh, fast, fast flashing green lights. So there's obviously some sort of link there. And if I were to refresh my screen, hopefully we should see something on the screen as well. Okay, so this is the main page. So rather than all of the NDs on the remote side, now we're seeing actually information from both radios. So this is the local radio. At the top here, we can see, okay, the local radio is the office and the remote radio is the depot. So this is the depot and this is the office. So we're seeing uh, received levels, minus, 40, minus 44, minus 46, which is pretty good. MEC is good, FEC load is good as well. Uh, you see there's a couple of orange arrows here, so if I click over the top of this, it's saying that the configured value uh, is uh, uh, 26 dBm because variable power is enabled. So if I were to take off a variable power, that uh, triangle will disappear. And again, currently, the capacity is telling me that the configured value could, could be giving us 327 megabits per second, but it's only giving us 100 megabits per second because it's restricted by the license. So the current license in this radio is only 100 megabits per second. So uh, that is what you'd expect to see in terms of the link. Uh, I can say it's 192.168.5.11. The other uh, one I've got here is uh, .10, so that's the other end of the link. So I'm going to get exactly the same information, but in reverse. So this is depot office. This one here is office depot. But it's the, exactly the same information. And the thing to check is that there's no save button on either of these, because obviously if the save button is still there, if I reboot it, I'm going to lose some of my settings. So that's really all there is to, to setting up the radios. The last thing I do is, uh, if I was worried, what I'd do is I'd reboot both the radios and, re and just check all the settings come back again, just to double check to make sure the settings have actually taken. The other thing which is probably useful to do, particularly if you've got a long link which is going to be hard to align, is that what you really want to do is rather than having a high level modulation with lower power, you want to have a low modulation with the highest power, which is going to make your alignment as easy as possible. So what I want to do in order to do that, I go back into radio configuration, Kind of modify, and I'd reset my modulation to four qualm. So that's the last modulation, which is going to give me my maximum power, and I'll do an execute for both. So it's going to set the modulation of both radios to the lowest modulation with the highest power. So I'm, when I'm doing that alignment, it's going to be the easiest it can be in terms of actually getting the initial uh, um, link to be able to actually start doing the alignment. So that's really about it in terms of programming an Integra G radio. It's all pretty straightforward. The GUI is pretty straightforward to, uh, to use. If you have any problems at all, you can obviously contact us. Our contact details are available at www.staffaustralia.com.au. The other thing is when you receive a radio, you will receive a bit of a cheat sheet inside of it, which has got a checklist of the things you need to do with things like passwords and usernames and also the key settings that you need to change. So good luck and I hope it goes well. And yeah, we can see now that the radio has had both come back and if we just go back to here, I can now see that the received levels are obviously a lot lower because our transmit power is now higher because of the lower modulation and that's gonna make our alignment so much easier. Hope it goes well, cheers. If you found this video useful, feel free to follow our Facebook page. 
that's SAF Australia, or alternatively go to our website, safaustralia.com.au. So it's got all our contact details, uh, including emails and phone numbers. Uh, we offer 24 by 7 uh, technical support, so if you do have any technical problems if, when you're trying to configure these links, feel free to give us a ring and we'll certainly sort it out for you. Have a great day.